It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're taking a look at the movies of September 14th, 2001. But, of course, before we eventually get to those movies, we kind of have to talk about what happened three days prior to that. And, um, and uh, kind of my original plan with the show was to talk about the significant events that happened around these particular weeks, and I did it for a little bit, but um, I just honestly forgot to... Do, I just honestly really did not feel the need to really do them unless they were really important significant events and honestly obviously i can't really forget about this moment like nobody else can really forget this moment when on september 11 2001 we had a, a massive terrorist attack on, on on america uh 19 terrorists hijacked four commercial airliners that were scheduled to go from various places new england and the mid-atlantic regions of the east coast to california the first two planes hit the world trade center in new york and, and essentially those buildings are no longer here anymore and then the third one was hit the, hit the Pentagon in Washington D.C., and then the fourth one hit a rural part of Somerset, Pennsylvania, which there is the September 11th memorial, which I actually have been to. I went there a couple years ago when we were on our way down to Ocean City. We drove past there, so went there, actually on the anniversary of September 11th. And um, I kind of talked about how this day was important in my life too, and how like I. To be honest with you, when I was just I was I was like 12 years old when this happened, and honestly, it didn't hit me until years until months later, not even months later, just days later, when I realized how important this really was. Because I've talked about it before, how on that day, um, I was in middle I was in middle school, I think. Yeah, middle school, I think. I think it was in middle school because if I'm not mistaken, but um, but. Uh, Everyone went home early, and I thought I was. I thought, okay, I'm a, I was a 12 year old kid. I really didn't really want to go to school, honestly. So I thought, okay, I'll just use that time to go outside and play and ride around on my scooter. I'll, I'll drive around the park, the little area where we parked the car at. And it didn't take me until it didn't take me until later on that day to realize that how significantly that day was. And um, and kind of like everybody else, it kind of changed my view of kind of changed everything pretty much. Like. This is three thousand people lost their lives in what is still the most deadliest te deadly terrorist attack in human history, and ha essentially has ignited the the war on terror that we've been kind of dealing with for, for much of the last twenty years. But um, so of course everyone was on edge. Everyone was kind of scared to go outside for a number of, for a number of days and weeks, and um, in a way like it's a, of course obviously it's a day that we'll never forget here in the US and pretty much pretty much all of us here in America will never forget that day because it is such a tragic day for the country but you might be thinking to yourself well because this happened clearly the box office and the and the movie theaters weren't doing money whatsoever because you know nobody was really that nobody really wanted to go outside and see movies because of the situation that was going on right now you would think that but um You'd actually be kind of surprised by that. Yeah, believe it or not, the weekend box office actually moved up compared to the year before. Uh, in 2000, the, the overall box office gross was $53 million. The weekend, af the weekend after September 11th, it went up to $65 million. Now, none of these movies that we're going to talk about here in just a little bit are were massive hits. But then again, also keep in mind that the year before was not a great, great weekend at the box office either. I think the highest grossing movie that came out that weekend in 2000 only grossed about five million dollars this weekend nine million dollars which is a vast improvement but at the same time it isn't really saying a whole lot in particular but um but uh yeah this particular weekend was very very interesting considering everything that just happened the d days before how everybody was feeling around this point i mean it was really a tough tough time for a lot of us for obvious reasons i mean when you really look back on it and you realize that there were th this that sports basically everything shut down before this was like for a lot of people this was before we had like the big for some of my some of the people out there who've been watching this who probably weren't even around when this happened this was kind of COVID nineteen before COVID nineteen I mean everything just stopped for a good number of days TV shows stopped you know uh, places closed down stores closed down you know there was not really a whole lot for people out there because they were afraid for their lives and rightfully so we were in a very unusual situation here that a lot of people hadn't seen since the day when Pearl Harbor was attacked I mean moments like these are days that we always remember and it was really a very interesting time for a number of different reasons I mean think about this when um, 
when this happened, the NFL basically had no choice but to halt the game, but to postpone the games that were coming up that weekend. Not because they were they thought it was in the best interest, but because they were gonna, they were going to keep going up until the New York football teams, the Jets and the Giants, basically said. We can't play in these conditions. I mean, the I mean, the building where the Jets and Giants is do their business is literally you can literally see where the Twin Towers were. So, how is anybody supposed to take take concentration into that while you have that going on here? So, and it also didn't help that also around about about maybe about four, almost forty years before this, when this happened. On the day that JFK, JFK died, Paul Tagliabue, who was still the commissioner of the NFL in 2001, uh, basically decided that despite this tragic event where our president was just killed, and 48 hours later, the NFL forced them to play their regularly scheduled games, which definitely left a lot of people very uncomfortable that Tagliabue made that decision. So I think he realized that and basically said, "Yeah, you're right. We cannot play after an event like this." So every game that so everyone had their bye weeks the following week, and so basically everybody had to play the rest of their games over the, starting the next week over the course of the next couple of week couple of weeks and months. And so, like that's how big that's how important this event was, and it's definitely something that we will never forget as a nation. And honestly, anyone who lived through it really will never forget it. It's one of those days that we hope will never happen again. And um, hopefully that is the case overall. That, but um, I've talked about this day long enough. I mean, I'm already going on what seven minutes now talking about this di this day in particular. But uh, this is a, this is a very significant event that happened, and this is one that really kind of changed everything because there were a lot of movies that were supposed to come out around this time that the studios had to scramble to move around and basically push off to the side because they had stuff in there that they did not feel comfortable putting out. Like, of course, Sony had that famous Spider-Man poster where Spider-Man's eyes are looking at the World Trade Center, and they had that great teaser trailer that unfortunately is banned now. But then they also had a couple movies at Disney, Bad Company and Big Trouble, which had to move. I think Big Trouble was actually supposed to come out a couple of weeks later after this mo after this particular weekend, but um, they had to push those back into 2002. And um, yeah, a lot of things had to change around here. A lot of things were scrambling around, and it took a, it took a lot of people a lot of time to get, to get back to it. I mean... David, I mean, in particular, I think the first person in television that basically said we have to get back to work was David Letterman because he came back on the air less than, I think, less than a week after the event, the September 11th attacks. And slowly but surely, everything kind of went back to normal. There were a couple of little snags here and there. There were a couple moments where there was a lot of worries and concerns, specifically with um, NBC when they had the anthrax attack a couple of weeks after after this, and everybody had to evacuate the building and. It was a tough time. It was a very, very rough time for a lot of people around then, especially in the world of entertainment, because they had ne a lot of these people had never been around for an event like this, and it was really, really significant in a number of different ways. And um, like I said, I've covered this before. I've talked about my overall remembering of not the 9-11 attacks. I did a video a couple years ago talking about it. If you want to go check that out, I'll have a link to it in the corner right up there or over here. I always keep forgetting I have the front-facing camera, and I can't really tell where the card goes, but um, it's either going to be in one of these sections here. If not, just go to the, go down below. The link will be there. So, yeah. Um, so, that's where we were at at this point. So, two movies came out. This Let's get actually back to the movies, because two movies came out this particular weekend, and really, I don't think they really had any other choice for these particular movies, because neither one of them really had anything too significant and too that related to what, what's happened. So I guess they felt like, okay, we'll just put these out here. I don't know if we're going to make any money for it, but we'll see what we can do. So let's take a look at both of these movies. And uh, we'll start off with the big new release of the weekend, and that is Keanu Reeves in Hardball. Did these kids... Now I'm going to back the heck up. You've got to talk big. What's going on? All right, let me break it down. I'll right quick. Coffee's there. Catch any apple ball. In okay, dress. I got it. Thanks. This Friday... You guys will never be a team until you see it played right. Let's Bad News Bears for the next generation. One of the most important things in life is showing up. I'm blown away by your ability to show up. Hardball, rated PG-13. Starts from the computers everywhere. So in Hardball, you have Keanu Reeves playing a bright, educated, handsome guy who pro whose promising future was wrecked by his gambling addiction, which drags him into heavy drinking and petty crime, but worst of all, the stifling grip of lone drug bookies. 
Uh, Desmond for alone, he agrees to stand in for a lawyer friend as coach of the Chicago Ghetto Little League baseball team. His sense of pride becoming the boys' sole item in competition, plus their attractive teacher played by Diane Lane, motivate Connor, but the crushing loan problem rather requires leaving town. And um, I think the trailer pretty much sums it up right there. This is pretty much just bad news bears for a new generation and a much more... Into, and, a, and a more adult Bad News Bears, a more serious Bad News Bears, if you will, because it's more serious than the original Bad News Bear, Bears. Is. The original Bad News Bears is a very is a is a comedy and a really great comedy, but it does have those little brief flashes of moments where they do go for a little bit more of a dramatic edge, but it's never to the point that this movie particularly is. This is more of a movie that's basically a dramedy, and. Um, like I said, you have Keanu Reeves, Diane Lane, John Hawks, Michael B. Jordan stars in this, and one of his, I believe this is one of his earliest film roles, if I'm not mistaken, if not his first one. Let me see here. Yeah, this is the first one he's been in. He'd been in a couple of other TV shows, like he had a cameo in The Sopranos and in his first year, as well as the, the, the CBS Cosby show that was on in the 90s, but um, this is his first big screen appearance, and I think the movie itself is fine for what it is, but it definitely feels like a film that very much has a lot of that thing that we've seen done in various sports movies like this. I mean, this is pretty much Bad News Bears. It's the Mighty Ducks. It's Major League. It's um, a lot of these movies where the underdog team has to go in and be the, be the champions that they can be and motivates the, not only, the team not only gets motivated, but the coach gets motivated. And they have this big moment at the end where, you know, everybody has to basically like come come together when it matters the most. And, you know, it's... It's for, it's pretty much a story we've seen done to death, but I like the little twists that they do throw in here. They do throw some curveballs in here that's just like, okay, I didn't expect to see that coming, so I'll give you credit for that. Because there are moments where the movie does have a, a happy ending, but it also has kind of a sad ending, too. Like, it really, like, it really, uh, what something happens to one of the characters in the movie, and it's just a, a tragic, a tragic event, and, um... And it's just, re it really is like, it really does take you out of the, take you into a sense of reality here because, like, it really does, sh it really does show the humanity of the characters when this particular moment happens in here. It happens before the big game, too. So there's a lot of questions of whether or not when this person dies, do they want to continue on? Should they continue on? And they eventually do it. And not surprisingly, they win the championship. But I do like the little curveballs that they throw in there for you. They don't really go down the down the pathway that you think it does, even though most of the story does. That little curveball they throw at the end there actually helps the movie give it its own little distinctive personality to it, its own unique edge to it. And for that, I give it a lot of credit for that. So I can't really say it's a great movie overall, but because of those little moments like that, and because the acting overall is very good, I have to give him points for that as well because it's, I think it is works in the film's favor. I think it is a very solid film. Not a great film by any means, but certainly not a bad film by any means either. I think it works fine for what it is. If you can, put, if you can get past the very much generic storyline that mo that this movie takes up takes with it, I think you can handle it for what it is. It's a fu it's a fine movie for what it is, but it's not one I'm going to say you must check it out. I'm saying like, if you want to see a good Keanu Reeves movie that ha is that got a, that didn't get the proper attention it deserves, definitely check this one out. I think it's definitely worth the watch. So, uh, with that said, let's move on to our last movie that we have here, and that is The Glass House. Still Korean, but what's going on inside? I found a fake personal piggy bank. I have to make my move. Is a lesson, Ruby, in survival. The Glass House opens everywhere Friday. So, in this movie, is a psychological mystery thriller, which also stars Diane Lane, who was also in Hardball. But it tells the story of two siblings who go to live with friends of their parents as the oldest of the siblings start to get suspicious of the family's friend's patriarchy. And, um, it, believe it or not, this is actually not the first movie to have the title The Glass. I think there's, like, literally four movies with this exact title. And I think one of them was actually released in theaters 15 years later. And it's just like, like, I guess The, the Glass House is a generic-ass title, so I guess we gotta take that, but, but, um... But it's a movie that is not really all that memorable, the more you think about it, despite a too good of a cast for this. Lily Sobieski, Diane Lane, Stellan Skarsgård, Bruce Stern, Chris Noth. Um, the director of this is Daniel Sackheim, who's gone on to have a prolific television career as a director, directing episodes of The Walking Dead, The Americans. He also did Law & Order, X-Files. Like, he's a good director overall. And Wesley Strick, who gave us the great Martin Scorsese remake of Cape Fear 10 years ago, I mean, this is a good pe team all around here. 
But there's nothing about this movie that really works when it's all said and done. It's a movie that just really feels like a film that you know what's coming. You know what the plots are get twists are going to be. You know what the foreshadowing is going to be. You know who the bad guy is. You know who the hero's got to be. You know, you got to have that big twist at the end. And honestly, I think people were getting sick and tired of it because it quickly crashed and burned at the box office. It didn't do any money whatsoever. And um, they apparently had like 74 minutes worth of footage that the studio didn't even want because they had no intentions on making on ha having this movie around here and it's been considered lost media but think about that the movie was the original cut of this was three hours long who the f who the hell is gonna sit in this movie for three hours and watch this movie when you have clearly nothing here that even warrants a ha is that mu is that much of a running time they took out 74 minutes of this movie and at 106 minutes it still feels really really long like really much. like it's a terrible terrible movie and um you know like i said this was what this came after the this came days after september 11th and some people actually use that kind of as a criticism to the film itself criticizing the film's violence and the time of the release and a lot of critics saw this as what the first one they saw after they got back to work and you know, I can see where they're coming from. I don't know if I'm going to blame the 9-11 attacks on the movie being bad. It's just a bad movie. It just wasn't a movie that was executed well. It didn't deliver anything that interesting that make people really want to go see it. And there's just nothing about it that's worth it when it's all said and done. It's a lackluster movie on a number of different levels. It's a type of movie that usually would be in a dumping ground month like January or... When, or um, I was going to say Wednesday, but I know in the month of August, but they put it out in September and uh, came and went. Nobody really remembers it, and there's probably a good reason for it. So. so that is The Glass House. And so on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies, and because of what had happened, uh, like I said, a couple of days before this, next weekend's not really all that interesting because there was one movie that was supposed to come out this the weekend after this, and that was Big Trouble, but that got pushed back because of stuff that was in the movie that kind of was seen as not not appropriate for the time so we only have one movie to look at and it's um it's a doozy mariah carey's glitter um which uh the movie itself probably is not as bad as the way that the film was mar marketed and i mean not because of the way the mar movie was marketed but the way that mariah carey was acting and um we'll just delve into that when we get to the next episode so um so we'll check it out then but until then uh, thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, uh, please hit the place on the next page, check out the previous episode, and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this on this channel. And then on time about the movie Splashback, we'll take a look at a couple movies, three movies, in four movies in particular. We have uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jim Belushi in Red Heat, as we're going back to June 17th, 1988. We also have John Candy and Dan Aykroyd in The Great Outdoors, Susan Sarandon and Kevin Costner in the baseball comedy Bull Durham, and also A World Apart. Four films we'll look at next time uh, on Time About the Movie Flashback, which should be coming up next, right after this.